where I have to calculate all of the critical points of the function, then determine if each point represents a relative maximum, relative minimum, or a saddle point. To do this, the first step is to determine the critical numbers, which are where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. The second step is to perform the second partials test, where we determine the value of d at the critical numbers, and then based upon the sine of d, as well as the sine of the second order partial with respect to x, we can determine whether the point is a relative minimum, relative maximum, a saddle point, or inconclusive. Let's begin by determining the partial derivatives that we need. Let's first find the partial of f with respect to x. To do this, we differentiate x squared plus 4y squared plus 2 with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. The derivative of 4y squared with respect to x is equal to 0 because we treat y as a constant. And the derivative of 2 with respect to x is also equal to 0. And now let's find the second order partial with respect to x. So we find the derivative of 2x with respect to x, which is equal to 2. Let's also find the second order mixed partial, the partial of f with respect to x, then with respect to y. So we differentiate the partial of f with respect to x with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of 2x with respect to y is equal to 0 because we treat x as a constant. And now let's find the first order partial with respect to y. To do this, we differentiate x squared plus 4y squared plus 2 with respect to y, now treating x as a constant. The derivative of x squared with respect to y is equal to 0 because we treat x as a constant, plus the derivative of 4y squared with respect to y, which is 8y, plus the derivative of 2 with respect to y, which is 0. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to 8y. Let's find the second order partial with respect to y. So we differentiate 8y with respect to y, which is equal to 8. And now to find the critical numbers, we need to determine where both the partial of f with respect to x is equal to 0 and the partial of f with respect to y is equal to 0, which means we need to solve the system of equations 2x equals 0 and 8y equals 0. Well, both of these equations are very easy to solve. To solve for x, we divide both sides by 2, giving us x equals 0. To solve 8y equals 0 for y, we divide both sides by 8, which gives us y equals 0. So the critical numbers are 0 comma 0, which means the critical point has an x-coordinate of 0, a y-coordinate of 0, and to find the z-coordinate, we need to evaluate the original function at f of 0 comma 0. which gives us the square of 0 plus 4 times the square of 0 plus 2, which is equal to 2. So again, this question is asking for the critical points, not just the critical numbers, and therefore the critical point is 0 comma 0 comma 2. So let's go ahead and highlight this. Now we move on to step 2 by determining the value of d. Once we know the sine of d and the sine of the second order partial with respect to x, we can determine whether we have a relative minimum, relative maximum, a saddle point, or the test is inconclusive at the critical point. When determining d, notice in our case a is equal to 0 and b is also equal to 0. So we have d is equal to second order partial with respect to x at 0 comma 0 times the second order partial with respect to y at 0 comma 0. And then we have minus the square of the mixed second order partial, the partial of f with respect to x, then with respect to y at 0 comma 0. So we have d equals the second order partial with respect to x is equal to the constant 2. And then we have times the second order partial with respect to y at 0 comma 0, which is equal to the constant 8. And then we have minus the square of the mixed order partial with respect to x, then with respect to y at 0 comma 0, which we can see above is equal to 0. Simplifying, we have 16 minus 0, which is equal to 16. So from here, we now know that d is greater than 0, and also 
the second order partial with respect to x at 0 comma 0 is positive 2. So looking at our notes, d is greater than 0, and the second order partial with respect to x is greater than 0, and therefore we have a relative minimum. So we're looking at the notes here. So to conclude, the point 0 comma 0 comma 2 represents a relative minimum. And before we go, let's verify this graphically. I've already graphed the function f of x comma y, and the point 0 comma 0 comma 2 is here in red, and notice how it is a low point on the graph verifying we do have a relative minimum. And actually in this case, because it's the lowest point of the entire function, we could also classify it as an absolute minimum. I hope you found this helpful.